What's up, everybody? It's Joe Simpson. Today, I wanted to talk about spinnerbaits and making spinnerbaits. I have recently purchased a bunch of stuff and started making some of my own spinnerbaits. And what I like about that is that they're really easy. It's immediate results, and they're fun, and they work. Um, one of my favorite spinnerbaits is the War Eagle. I like the Finesse War Eagle spinnerbait 5 sixteenths. I like the three eights. I don't throw real big, heavy spinner baits. I probably should, would get more bites and strikes from bigger fish, but I like fishing the little ones. So I went on a quest to try to figure out how to make my own spinner baits and got onto a site called Lure Parts Online Inc. You should check it out. They have some really cool stuff. But the biggest problem I had trying to orient myself with what to order to get started making my own spinner baits is just how big is a number one blade or a number two blade or a number three blade. I have no idea. It was about as confusing as hooks are. And you know how that can be. Knowing that there would probably be something online to go find that would help you with that quest. If you look right down here, you can see Jan's Netcraft, which is another place you can get all these parts from, puts out a piece of paper that shows you live the different sizes. So, for example, I have this number two regal finish colorado blade and you just find the colorado blades wherever those are for now it only works if you print it it doesn't work on your computer you got to print it on paper but you can lay or estimate how big these blades are i would have thought the number two was a number three but the number three is just a little bit bigger so it's not perfect it's not going to be perfect but it's going to at least get you in the ballpark at least you know a number two or three relative size you know in the range of Anyway, once you kind of figure out what you need, um, and I made a whole list here and wrote everything down, but once you calculate everything that you need, you can find all the little pieces and parts um, and order them and get them in a package. So let me just show you some of the spinner baits that I've designed and some of my uh, design philosophies behind them, so to speak. Uh, this one here is a quarter ounce, and this is... A deep Colorado blade, which has been, they call it hammered or pinged or pinned or whatever. Uh, this is, that's a mag willow blade. You see these a lot on the finesse war eagles. It's the mag willow. And so this puts off a pretty decent thump. And I just did my own trailers and we'll be talking soon about making your own trailers. So you can see that has a really nice, it's been used. You can see some grass on there. Uh, a little bit of orange in there, a little bit of purple and blue, some salt and pepper colors. And what I did was I just ordered um, generic heads. My heads were pre-made and I ordered them equipped with either Gamagatsu or VMC hooks. I wanted the best hooks on these heads. Now these wires are not super strong and you can get heavier weights and thicker wires. And I'm sure if you look around enough, you could find heavy wire uh, spinner baits, but you know, sometimes that little flex in the wire gives you a little bit different vibration too. So it could be a good thing to have a little movement. And when you hook up with a fish, it's more of a, a pull type deal. So I don't think you're going to bend this out and you can always bend it back into shape. But anyway, this head, the thing is about these heads, when you order them, they come in packs of five and you will ramp up pricing and expense very quickly messing around with this stuff. So you have to be careful what you order, how much you order, and the cost of it. So I just ordered a pack of white heads and I ordered a pack of these like bluegill heads, I would call them. And this is pretty universal. I can get this to match and look good with just about anything. And this is something else you can do. Once you start getting these parts and these trailer skirts and these special blades and stuff, like, check this out. This is a old War Eagle spinnerbait that was mouse color, and the skirt was totally whooped. So I put a brand new skirt, emulated the same color as the mouse from the War Eagle, changed the skirt dimensions a little bit, and I put on this Picasso painted yellow willow leaf blade along with the original yellow leaf blade from War Eagle. So you end up with a really good looking configuration. It's totally pimped out. It's not original. It doesn't come like that in the box. Um, but this one was getting tapped today. We had some muddy water. So this really comes through in a pinch, things like that. Now, this one is a spinner bait that I put together that is kind of a purple color with some salt and pepper, you know, trailer streaks in there. And I put a purple Kytec, 
like a morning dawn or whatever color that is. Kind of unique on this one is I have a deep Colorado blade. And by deep, it just has a little extra cut there. So it really slaps and pumps water. And I have a like a black chrome um, willow leaf blade. And these shine up really good. Um, yeah, this looks really hot in the water. And you use these spacers here. You can either buy the spacers or I just take little pieces of Bic pen and cut the clean parts off of the ink shaft out of a Bic pen. And that became my spacer because I failed to order them and I needed them. If you don't want to do an A-rig, but you want to have a lot of flash and bling going on and have a little swim bait for them to get after, that one works good. And I have three blades and these are kind of a small blade and they spin really fast and you can kind of reel this in slow or reel this in fast. Anyway, that's enough show and tell for now, but let me talk about the anatomy of the spinnerbait. Let's talk about what goes on a spinnerbait. Um, when you make a spinnerbait, you're going to need the wire head, first of all, and you'll need to put a ball on first. Then you'll put on the first blade and the clevis or clevis, however you want to say it. Um, that's that little U-shaped hook that holds this onto the shaft. And there's a certain way to put on this blade. And then you put either one or two more balls. Those are spacers. And then you uh, mount your swivel and your main blade. And then you crimp it all in together. And, and that's really it. And then you make your skirt and put it on. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make all of this and put it on for you. And um, yeah, let's do it. So I start with my wire body. Get my clevis out. I'm going to use a deep Colorado black chrome as my blade up here. I need a swivel for the main. You're going to need one, two, three balls on this one. I just know because I've built these. Don't get intimidated. You can use as many or as few as you want. So I'm going to have this blade connected to that swivel, connected to this wire, this U-shaped thing holding this blade onto this shaft, a couple balls in the front and a couple balls in the back to keep this thing functioning properly. That's how it's going to go together. So you pre-plan that out. And what I do with these balls, because sometimes they can be tricky, is I turn them flat and I just put my shaft right in there. Oh, boy. Sometimes I do one. Sometimes I do two. It depends. Now, this, the way I do this one is I like to put, sorry about my fingers. I just strung up my fishing reel and I hold the line when I put it on and it kind of stains my fingers so it looks nasty. But uh, I am cleaner than that normally. What I do is this. What you want is you want the cove of this blade facing back. You want the bulge forward facing forward like this. You just do. Don't question it. Just like that. Once you have these, this is going to keep your shaft blade here kind of spaced out properly. Now, there's some pliers that you could use while assembling these spinner baits, which come in really handy. You don't have to have any of them, but it's good to have all of them. These are little round bending pliers for wire bending. These are clippers to cut things. And this is your split ring pliers. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little tip on this daddy right here. Without letting everything slide off, you take your fingers and then you get your little round benders. You pick about how big you want it to be. The farther up this cylinder you go, the fatter it gets. So I like to be about right here, and I start it this way, and then I stop. See, I have that little hoop going there, and then I turn my hand. See, here I was like this. So I don't want to keep going because it's difficult. So I recalibrate my hand here, grab this, and I apply pressure. You don't want to close it up yet, but you can see here that it's open and ready to receive this part. So the next thing you do is you mount your willow blade onto your swivel. See how that split ring split that swivel right there? Um, then you just start this thing onto this blade. I put the split ring pliers down because they're kind of hard to do anything with at that point. And then I just use these to just start spinning that swivel around or spinning that uh, split ring around until it clicks into place. Yeah, see how that just keeps going and going and going? That's a quality swivel. And that's what you're going to find on War Eagles and all those different high-end 
spinnerbait types. I wouldn't even say War Eagle's high end necessarily. It's just good. Um, once you get this on, you want to just close it off. Now, I try not to pinch it down too out of whack. See, I don't like this piece sticking out on the side because it can catch like weeds and brush. So that was a little more than I wanted. But um, yeah, usually, let's see if I can fix that. All right. All right. See how that's nice and closed? Nothing's going to come out. And don't worry, this is not going to take that much pressure. And once you're done, you basically have your two blades and this thing's ready to rock. Now that we've got the spinnerbait mechanical build out of the way, let's do some of the fun stuff. Now, what I really love about making skirts is the creativity you can have in making this. Now, the one I'm gonna be making today, I'm just gonna keep it simple. This is the only skirt I'm gonna use. What I like to do though, is sometimes you can pick like um, this black with purple and salt and pepper in it, and you can blend it with like this color and it looks really good, or you could blend purple in this color and it gives you kind of a crappy look. I mean, it's limitless. It really is limitless. You can take half of a red, see how sometimes they come in like sheets and I'll explain how this works. Cause I was curious when I first got it, you can take like half of a red and feed it into like that color, or you can interweave it with this color and it's really easy to do. So in this particular case, we're going to use only one color. So we're not going to mix and match, but the way it works, is you decide, okay, how do I want to pinch this off? And you go, okay, well, since there's yellow, I'm gonna use a yellow band. These are actually just little rubber bands right here. So you start this thing off and you roll your little rubber bands on top. And it doesn't always go easy, but you just roll these on and you take it down to the edge. It's kind of like making a Senko, if you've ever done that before. And you decide how thick you want your skirt to be. I find that three is enough, but on this particular spinnerbait, and the reason I'm making this color is because Pat and I were fishing today and I literally took my lure, was showing it to him and dropped it in the water and dropped my brand new spinner bait right in the water. Now this is supposed to be much easier than I'm showing it right here, but basically you take that wire hook, you go in about the middle of this thing and you, you hook your, your stuff right there. See how easy that was? It's time to put on your second. Now you can at this time start mixing colors. You could put a strand of white, a strand of purple, and really make endless combinations. But for this particular bait, since it's one that I had already made and I really liked it a lot, I'm just going to make it the way I made it the first time. You stick this one on there. You go about midway. It doesn't matter if you're perfectly centered. Just do the best you can. And then what you do is you basically suck this hook up into this little tube like this. And you'll notice all of your stuff goes up in there. Now, don't worry if you start losing everything being even. It doesn't really matter. You can fix it in a second. So you hold that wire this way, and you roll this down onto the bait, and then you pull this out. And now you can start to roll. See how I rolled the rubber band and it turned yellow? So now you can move that around, center it up more, um, and you can make things a little more even. So I've got it about the middle and you can adjust this later. So at this point, what you do is you just trim off the ends and it frees your tentacles on your, on your thing. So let me show you, trim it off. There we have it, right? And you'll have some casualties of war, but don't sweat that. I'm cutting it off screen so I don't leave it all in there. So now you have your trailer. Now, How do you put it on your spinnerbait? So you want to get this onto that, right? So what I do is I just kind of flip it around and I try to evenly move about these pieces and then just go right down the middle as best you can. Don't jab your finger. Just go down the middle through that rubber band and you see I'm eventually going to come out on the bottom. See the hooks coming out on the bottom and you just pull it through. That's it, man. That's it. And then you just slide it back up on top and you just see, first of all, is it going to hang the way you want it to? And I, I think that's fine the way it's sitting right there. Um, of course, you know, you might want to even things up a bit, but I think that's going to look good. I want this one to be a little bit thin because um, I might be putting trailers on it and stuff. So if you want a thick, heavy skirt, you could have done three or four pieces of this and it would have filled in more, but I'm fine with the way this is. One thing I like to do and I would say, be careful and don't 
put crazy glue on the actual rubber itself because it makes it very stiff and non-pliable and it kind of ruins the action. I've learned the hard way. Just take it from me. So what I do is I take this and I slide it up and I get it close to where it's going to go. Okay. And I get over the first hump because you're not there yet. And then you can kind of see how things are developing. And once you get it tightened up on the first hump, this is where you can dress it up and you want to kind of look at it. Is it laying the way I want it to? Or is everything going where it wants, I want it to go? And I think it looks pretty good. You know, you're going to have these little pieces here and there jumping up. But before I slide it all the way up onto the neck, that's where I'd like to add a couple drops of crazy glue. Put a drop there. Put a drop here, drop here. You can kind of smear it around and push it. Don't go crazy. A, you'll glue your fingers together. B, and don't be in a hurry. It won't dry like in two seconds, but it'll dry pretty quick. And then you free it up. And then once you get your crazy glue and you're pretty happy with everything, just shove this all the way up. Be careful. It's starting to grab my fingers already. And this is where you want to work a little bit fast. Get it kind of spread out to where you want it. So there is a spinner bait. We just made our first spinner bait. Now you could trim this down, this piece here a little bit and make the blades a little bit closer to the body. I like to work it a little bit longer and I don't mind even bending this around however I need to, to make it work better for me. So here you go. Once you get that on there, that's not coming off. And in this particular case, the yellow band matches nicely. So I don't worry about it, but you can, if you don't like the look of bands, just put it, everything in place without gluing it and then use some tie, string tie, you know, like fly tie string. But that's, that's about it, guys. It doesn't get much easier than that. I mean, that looks really nice. It's a good looking spinnerbait. They cast well. They're quarter ounce. They're light. They're finesse. And if you don't like the angle, you can just tweak it a little bit, close it in there. And uh, yeah, this is going to be hot money bag of donuts, especially in stained water. Uh, or even clear water. I mean, this is a good imitation of a shad coloring uh, with some chartreuse and the, the head matches perfectly. So yeah, really love this. So if you are looking to expand your spinnerbait collection or you just want to take an old dilapidated spinnerbait and just jazz it up, you could do that. You could pimp out a beetle spin. You could take a uh, a jig head and put a skirt on it and mount it up to wire and make your own spinner baits. There's all different ways to make your own lures. I think one of the most satisfying things about making your own lures is catching the fish with them. It's kind of cool when you make something from scratch today, I caught one on this and I was showing Pat, you know, how much I liked it and it was a really good one. And I dropped it in the water. <laughs> He's like, there goes five bucks. You'll get into a little bit of upfront cost. But the thing is, you'll outrun it. Once you've got the blades, the beads, and the clevises, and all the different things that you need, um, you'll have those for the future builds. So, you know, then it's just buying a different head or different size heads. The reason I didn't buy a whole bunch of different colored heads is because they sell them in packs of fives. And I would get 10 if I got two different colors. So I didn't want to buy like a color like you know, green and then a red and then a black because I'd end up with like 40 spinner baits. And let's be honest, how many are you going to throw? So I really enjoy throwing spinner baits in the fall, especially in the spring too. Um, a spinner bait is really easy to make. It's a lot of fun to catch fish on and it's fun to fish because it's just chuck and wind, chuck and wind, chuck and wind. You can do different things, but it's fast and you can get these fish in and out of the boat quickly and you can find fish. It's kind of like using a square bill or a rattle trap. It's a spinner bait. So Give it a shot. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. It's If you want to get into lure building, it's a great place to start because you're not carving wood and doing specialty work. It's just popping pieces together and getting creative, and it's a lot of fun. So enjoy it. I'll talk to you guys soon.